Culp, and you know the premise. It's basically get to know those who are working in your school district, who are working for you. Why? Not only do they matter, but you matter. And joining us today is the new Assistant Superintendent, Bob Rizzo. How are you doing, Bob? Good, how are you? I, uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, great I to be here. I appreciate it. All right. So, real simple, just an easy conversation. It's all about you. You know you better than me. Bye. So this is going to be easy. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So you're new to the district. Uh, obviously, let me let's just let's talk about it. It's it's got to be a transition. You're coming from Pittsburgh area. Yeah, right? about an hour outside of Pittsburgh, Indiana, PA. All right, beautiful. So coming here, what are some maybe top five things you, either you learned or spots maybe you, outside of school? Something about the area. Something about the area. Well, what I liked about the area first and foremost, I mean. From Western PA, so coming out here towards Philly, I expected to see a lot of things built up, and it was nice to come here and see green space, see fields, see uh, see deer in the morning. I, I really enjoyed that. I like seeing communities. I like seeing a lot of uh, a lot of the suburban areas that are around, and the schools are beautiful. I mean, when I came here and I kind of toured all the schools, they're just it's just a beautiful area, and a lot of pride. It is. Uh, as I lived here a little bit, I got to set that sense of community. I, I went to a few of the little community days that were going on, and I got. A really, a really good feel for for how people value the small town mentality, even though it's such a big district. Yeah, I totally agree, and we'll, we'll get back to that in a little bit. Yeah, so sure. again, you grew up in Pittsburgh. Uh, tell us about your your parents. So you, you, your dad was a steel or steel worker. My dad was a welder. Well, uh, is a welder still mm -hmm. 70, 74 years old. Still going strong. <laughs> uh, Mom stayed at home. I mean, her 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 job was raising kids, and that was that was that was what she valued more than anything else. Um, so we. We, we made choices so that we could do what we needed to do to, to, for my parents to raise us up in, in a way that they wanted us to grow. Um, yeah, my dad worked two, three jobs just to kind of make ends meet, and, and my mom was was around all the time. She was she was one of our biggest supporters. Uh, I have a sister, um, so it was two of us growing up. She's six years younger than me, so at that time, you know, we were, you know, we both kind of were into our own little things. We're close now, and uh, it's been really good to... It's been really good to just kind of see where I came from and see see you know what my mom instilled in us growing up and how that has has paid forward. Uh, welder, so he he's probably probably makes fun of us a little bit like you. Maybe your job type thing. You, yeah. you talk about that work. I mean, you know, he's probably like, ah, your work. That's, ah, you know, summers off type thing. Yeah, he, <laughs> you know I, I, I will say this: the one thing that he did tell me um, whenever I was young and trying to figure things out. He said, Bob, just get a job where your fingernails don't get dirty. <laughs> so he at least had a perspective for, you know, wanting, wanting me and his kids to do better than he did, even though he did very well for himself. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. All right. So then you move on. you got a family of your own here. So tell us a little bit about them. So I have an amazing wife. 17 years we've been married. Her that's name a is good Becca. word. Amazing. Nice yep. to throw that in. Yeah, she's she's <laughs> she's a... Uh, she, she, she is uh, the glue that keeps us all together. And then we have four children. Uh, so I have two kids in 10th grade, twins, Aiden and Annie. I have a fifth grader, Sarah, and then I have a fourth grader, Sophia. Um, and they have been fully immersed in the community. The twins are in marching band, so they've been busy going here and going there and doing everything else. Sarah and Sophia, we just signed up for basketball. And uh, <laughs> so they're going to be busy going that route. And they're, they've all made friends and they have their little cohorts of people. So it's, it's been a good move for us. It, you know, we did it together, and uh, yeah. we had our we've had our struggles, we've had our conversations um, about what it means to go to a new community when all you know is one area. Uh, but all in all, they've all feel that this has been the best move for us. That's awesome. So, yeah. I mean, did you, did you, in a sense, change? I know you know the band's obviously really large here. So, was that did that make it easier for your girls? You know, sometimes it's tougher for teenage girls, high school compared to elementary to make that transition and things like that. Did you see that at all or was it pretty smooth? Well, I would say because of band, it was pretty smooth. Yeah. We moved in, we moved into town on, well, Friday the 2nd, August 2nd, and band camp started on Monday, August 5th. So we were here for a weekend and then they were right yeah, into it. But right it. away they got connected with kids and, uh, and that really helped because when school started, uh, they had people they could talk to instead of just going into a big school without knowing anybody. And it's Great segue, your girls into band and things like that. You have a musical background. Uh, you could talk about, you know, again, you were a musical director. How many years did you do that and what did you do before here? Sure. So um, my, my career spanned a few different districts, but mm -hmm. I was a band director for 18 years. Um, and in those 18 years, I taught everybody from kindergarten through 12th grade. Most of my career um, in teaching itself was high school band, um, although I had several years of doing elementary, um, getting kids started on instruments and doing some general music. Um, prior to that, uh, prior to doing the band thing, or after doing the band thing, I, um, I became an administrator. I started out being a high school assistant principal 
and I uh, did that for a little over a year and then, a, then an opening came in an elementary school and I spent the next five and a half years being a principal at the elementary level uh, which was K through five and I got to know kids on a whole different level and it was a lot of fun. Um, then I went to Central Admin and so and that was my path. All right, so yeah, music, music's part of you. Yeah. You know, I noticed that you said uh, you like rock, you like the, the good old rock. So I, I got a little playlist for you. I want to see if you can oh, name, some of the, uh, name some of these tunes. So name that tune if you can give me the artist then too. That is awesome. All right, you ready? Here we go. A test. You didn't tell me it was going to be a test. Let me I'm start with this one. Let me start with this one. Sorry. Like a good song. Oh, that's pretty easy. We will rock you clean. Good one. Oh, oh I can't see. So that's... Drawing a blank. Think red, Valentine's Day. Where they always give away. This is a good one. Oh, okay. Welcome. Welcome to the jungle. Yep. yep. Guns and Roses. This is a classic right here. Wow. Run DMC worked with him too. I know. So Aerosmith. Very good. This is a classic. Dirty D's Dungeon Chief. Wait, ACDC? ACDC, yeah. Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck, yep. Woo, this is a classic. This is a classic. <laughs> Add to the bone. Correct. <laughs> Smoke in the water. That's a classic, you're good. Oh, I gotta pass that one. Oh, I love this. We used to come in uh, high school basketball with this song. Classic band, one of the probably top top three bands of all time. So that's it. This brings back cruising days. Led Zeppelin. You got it. That's it. You brought me back to this. I'm one. gonna give you what, where, how, why, and what's that first one? The who, you got go. it. All right, yep, that's yep. pretty good. All right, so I tried. Classic yeah. rock, that's yeah. good. It's always tougher when you're on the spot yeah, and things that's true. like that. All right, so you know, just getting a little bit outside of school and things like that. You know, we like I said, we I know you like the music. Uh, what are some things you like to do in your free time? So. Um, you know, like like most parents, a lot of what I do is I do with my kids. Um, <laughs> but whenever um, whenever they're busy doing things, I do like to read. I do like to hang out, spend time with my wife. Um, you know, like like most parents, try and find a day and night whenever you can here or there. Uh, golfing was something I did a whole lot when I was you know not quite so busy. Uh, <laughs> it was my happy place to get out there, just be very quiet. Even whenever I really hooked the ball a lot, uh, I still or sliced the ball. I still was able to get out there and have a good time and relax and just kind of decompress, which is which is important nowadays. Um, music, I listen to all kinds of music. Yeah. Um, right now, um, I attend my, my children, my oldest daughter is into Broadway shows. We do a lot of, we listen to a lot of Broadway music and uh, the Rizzo family house has a karaoke night every couple <laughs> of weeks where we all sit around and have a good time there. Oh. So that's kind of some of the little things we do. That's good. All right. And I, I noticed you like the movies and you know, your all time favorite was Shawshank it's probably, Yeah, it's probably one of my uh, all time movies. I got a little yeah. quiz for you. See how well you know Shawshank, by the way. Oh, this is going to be an easy quiz. Okay. I'll help you out somewhat. All right, number one, what was Andy Dufresne's job? He was a banker. Correct. What was his best friend's name in Shawshank? His nickname. What's his real name? Why am I. Oh, I'm, I'm on the spot think of, again. Think of color. Red. Correct. Yep. What pet did Brooks, who worked in the library, have? A rat. Mouse. Not a mouse. That was, that was a green mile. It's in a library. It's a parrot. It was a bird. 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 Correct. Right, right. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. What was the name of the place that you, they put you for severe punishment? He got thrown in here for a long time. They call it the what? It's it the hole? Down. The hole, correct. Who was the artist that one inmate was singing to while listening on the headphones? He was sitting there in the library listening. Country singer. Um... Oh, I can't think of who. All right. It's 
Andy Williams. There you go. Okay. All right. And what was Red and Bro or Brooks and Red's job when they were out of prison? They got out of prison. What did they do every day? Uh, they worked in a grocery store. Correct. Packing bags. All right. What word did Andy use to describe the warden that got him thrown in the hole for a month? Think angles, not acute. Obtuse. Yep, called yeah. him obtuse. All right. And where uh, where did Andy tell Red that he kept the, the money that was hidden for him to meet up with him later in the movie? Where did he keep it? Under a what? Under a rock. Wait. Under a rock. Correct. Under a rock, yeah. Under a rock by the tree. All right. And what was one of the name one of the actresses on the posters in Andy's cell? He had three. Just give me any one. Raquel Welsh. Correct. All right. And... That's correct. You got it. All right. You did a nice job. All right. So that's pretty good. You like your movies there, huh? I do. So I know I you do. like the TV too. So which brings me to this perfect segue. You try out for Survivor? I did. I did. So involves, what happened? Tell us about this. Well, you know, I was I was pretty young at the time. Um, <laughs> I, the twins were. It was two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a little more than two. <laughs> a little more than two. Um, it involved doing a video, and we had to be creative in terms of how we wanted to do Survivor. So mm -hmm. early on in my days of. You know, the video technology was out there, but uh, I showed my ways of preparing for Survivor. And I never got on the show, but uh, but it was a lot of fun. My twins at that time were, were very, very young. They were just maybe a year and a half old at the time. Um, so they were in all the video clips that I was there. We wanted to incorporate the family as much as possible. Didn't that's work out, but we had a whole lot of fun making the video. That's awesome. So what... what uh, which which season was it? Where'd they go? Do you remember that? Oh no, I don't. Um, I I watched. I didn't watch any of the first season. I didn't even know about Survivor then. But I started <laughs> getting involved with the second season, and my wife mm. and I was one of the things we did. We just kind of watched it as we were going through and thought it would be fun. Yeah. Um, we were just dating at the time, but whenever the opportunity came, and uh, of course, you know, you get on there, and it was a uh, thirty nine days, whether you make it all mm. the way or not. So. It was a family decision because at that point I might have had to leave for a while, but, but we thought it'd be fun. So nice. it didn't work out, but it was good. Nice. And some other interesting things, you, you don't get to eat too much when you're on the Survivor, but I saw you saw you like chicken. You like the, yeah. is it fried chicken and things chicken like wings. that? Yeah. Chicken wings. Chicken wings. All right. Do you have any recipe, special recipe, how you make them or anything? Uh, you, know, like the you know, I, it's funny, one of the first graduate classes I took, we had to design a lesson. So the lesson I designed was on how to cook and eat chicken wings. And I found out that you can eat chicken wings about 14 different ways. Um, so that was a lot of fun. So um, we, we practice those in our house whenever we have wing night. And pumpkin carving. Yeah. So you like to do that? Like, do you do it with the kids? Or do yep. you do it yourself? Yep. So you don't like grab their pumpkins and get frustrated and like, give I, me that? I don't. I take don't a lot see? of pictures while they're doing it. Um, <laughs> although they do ask for help, but as we've gone on, as we've had more years of doing it, they're a little more independent. So we go through a lot of pumpkins come the holiday season. That's awesome. So. All right. So last question. Yep. I always, you know, kind of ask, what, you know, in... 10, 15 years still here at Spring Fort. What do you want to be your legacy? What do you want people to know or say about Rob Rizzo? I think anybody else, you know, I would say probably the same thing. I want, I want to add value to where we are. Um, that's the short answer. Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter, who's in fourth grade right now, she has nine years till she graduates. So for me, what do I want public ed to look like between now and the time she graduates high school? That's my tangible timeline mm -hmm. for how I can have an impact. So whatever role I'm in, I want to leave it better than I ever, than, I, want, I want to leave it better than it was when I came here. That's it. Well, thanks for coming here. I appreciate it. Thank you. It, I appreciate Rob. it. Hey, everybody. You see Rob around. I, I've seen him at the football games. And like he said, he's going to all these functions, the bands, wherever. Make sure you say hi to Mr. Rizzo. And thanks for joining us on Staff Connections. Until next time, I'm your host, Bill Cole. It felt great getting the opportunity to come here and be part of a really a, a top-notch district that is nationally known. Uh, there was a lot of anxiety that I had leaving my comfort zone, going 250 miles east towards uh, towards Spring Ford. But, uh, but when we got here and when I started working with the amazing staff and the, and the leadership and meeting some awesome students, it was a great fit. So we're really excited.